one. Come in, watch out. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, Waffle TV. Hello, all right, I'm Eleanor Conway, just guest presenting for this Waffle TV today. All the best interviews with all the best fringe acts in 2012. And this interview is, is the same. I'm here on this beautiful leather couch with a beautiful Gordon Southern. How are you doing? Beautiful leather Gordon Southern. Yeah. The beautiful Don't you know? <laughs> how are you doing? I'm very good, how are you? I'm all right. I, I do feel like your stalker. I feel yeah. like your stalker. Every, everywhere I go, you're out there. We've been sort of within an inch of each other for, for a few publicity moments, finally. We're doing it face to face. We are. Yeah. And you are party to that. You're here. Yeah. Good. So what's your show? Do you want to, do you want to, let's, let's talk show stuff. Let's do it. Let's pitch the show at the, the viewer. I'm doing a show called A Brief History of History. Yeah. It is the entire history of the world in an hour with jokes. So it's bloody fast and it's whatever the opposite of thorough it is. Okay, good. It's slapdash. That's <laughs> my, fa I love that. That's my favourite kind of There we go. Uh, Higgledy lecture. piggledy. Just so we'll, we'll, we'll laugh and we'll learn, is that what you're saying? That's sort of the idea. I worked years ago on QI, which I'm sure you know, yeah. and uh, John Lloyd, the producer, just sat me down and said, look, this isn't just a comedy show, this is the future of education. And that sort of set a switch off in my head. I went, that's a good idea. Do a show that actually isn't just me talking about my life, but actually about everything. <laughs> and then people can come, they'll laugh, and they might accidentally learn. And we are getting a few parents with their teenage kids and sort of they're coming in like, oh, this might be some, some medicine, and it isn't, it's, it's pudding. Um, I, th I think if my teachers were as entertaining as comics, like retelling the kind of factual stuff, I'd learn loads more. Maybe that's like a kind of second job for budding comedians that don't earn well, any money. I think, you know, a lot of educators would do well to watch shows like this, and there's a few shows around the festival where they have a, an edu edutainment agenda. That's the buzzword I'm flinging around, edutainment. Like it. You come from a sort of BBC Four background, don't you? I used to be years ago uh, in a sketch team called The Cheese Shop. Um, you can still catch us on BBC Four Extra around about 11 at night when no one's listening. Excellent. So that's happening. Uh, that's, is it about cheese? Is uh, it, what's, no. the, what's the cheese connotation? The cheese connotation is simply... Is it ironicy? Ironicy? Ironicy. Ironicy. It's like Morrissey. Ironicy in it, which I think is a, a new word. Ironicy. We've discovered a new element here on the leather sofa. <laughs> the ironic element in the periodic table of mirth. Um, what, what was the question? Don't know. Not good. Cheese shop. Yeah, we work sketches. And we call ourselves the cheese shop based loosely on the fact there was a classic Monty Python sketch set in a cheese shop called the cheese shop. And that was the title that one of us came up with back in the, oh, 1990. And it just, it hung around us literally like a bad cheesy smell for our entire career. I like your beard. Thanks very much. It's a bit of stubble, but it's getting out of hand now. In other exciting news, if you pan down, you will see Mr. Piffles, the magic dog. Yeah! There he is. He came on my show. He came on, he came, he came on the show, he came on my show, actually. I'm doing a late night, midnight chat show, actually. Don't chase after it, is that? No. <laughs> no, don't chase after. I'm trying to work it. I'm trying Sorry, to quote an interview here. Yeah, we are doing an interview. And you've got an anecdote, which you're going to do now. No, I'm not. I'm, trying okay. to I'm just quote, quote Byron in a plug. That was it. Um, Mr. Piffles and uh, Puff the Magic Dragon came, Piff, 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 Piff the Magic Dragon came on my uh, chat show, Midnight Rumble. Class. The other day. Did you see that thing on YouTube where someone stole his act word for word? Oh, yes, I it did. It was incredible. Right down to the costume and the dog. Yeah. Uh, was it Moldovan? I don't know. And the, and the, the judge calls him out and, and goes... the judge goes, Yes, your act is very good. It is not yours. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, face. Ooh, busted. Why would you do that? Um, I assume he thought he could get away with it. Which in 2012 is crazy because we've got the internet and television yeah. and stuff. And Mental. Has anyone ever tried to copy you and take your act? I've had jokes nicked. Have you? That's, that's a weird thing because you, you get annoyed but you're also a bit flattered. How does that work? Because I've had like I've had some people kind of go, oh, someone such, such and such stole such and such's jokes. And I, I always wonder how true that is. Well, revenge is sweet because what I did was this comedian who shall remain nameless. Who is it? Come on. I can't tell you. Give us a male or female? Male. Um, Tall or short? I can't say who he is, but on the TV show Show Me the Funny, he was the black dude. Can't say who it is. Anyway, he steals one of my jokes. I phone him up. Is that Prince? Yeah, Prince. <laughs> that wasn't Prince, it was uh, the other guy, uh, Rudy. <laughs> and. <laughs> you heard no, it? Because I phoned him up, I said, Oh, you're doing one of my jokes. And he went, I hold my hand up, I am. And I said, Can you stop doing it? And he went, All right then. I thought, Brilliant. That, that was easy. Don't think he did stop doing it, but you know, it was nice of him to at least say, Yeah, all right then, I did do that and I'll stop doing it. Why would you do that though? Ah, uh, because it's a good joke. Anyway, um, there's now a joke in my show which um, is officially the oldest ever joke written down in ancient Greek times. Okay. And this is also a joke that he happens to do. Oh. <laughs> so 
so revenge is elaborate and sweet. Elaborate and sweet, that's good. Uh, top tips to the fringe, is it how, um, I guess Top you... tips to the fringe, uh, National Museum of Scotland, always worth a visit, fantastic place. Um, the best thing, I always go and see Andrew Maxwell and he never lets me down, I think okay. he's a quality stand-up comedian. What else have I seen that was really good? Jigsaw are pretty good, the sketch trio. That's one of my friends from down south London, Dan Antopolsky. Oh yeah, you're from Brixton, aren't you? I'm from Brixton, home of the second night of rioting this time last year. Yeah, amazing, I'm from Shoreditch. I, I, did I you just... riot in Shoreditch? Well, no, because I was here, I was here. No, I'm not saying, did you riot in Shoreditch? Did Shoreditch riot? I don't know, I think they it's all went down nice, to Brixton. Yeah, someone just you know, throws, a, throws a pasty at a Greg where it was in Brixton, it was <laughs> full on. I, uh, I actually, it was the first time I used Twitter to save my life. So I was doing a gig in right. Cambridge and on the train on the way back, I thought, I'll just check Twitter. Because I had a feeling there was, there was trouble a-brewing. And all these people going, don't go to Brixton, avoid Brixton, Brixton's on fire. So I got off at Stockwell and uh, avoided it. Hooray! And then watched it on telly. Brilliant. Didn't need to write it, already got a telly. Boom. Excellent. Blinding. I've got a question from uh, our previous guest, that beautiful Helen Arney, who, Helen does, Arnie, who yes. does play the ukulele, and she's quite nerdy, but she, yeah, yeah she's nerdy lovely hot, though. Nerdy hot, though. Nerdy hot, definitely. Hot. Nordi, nerdy, nerdy sex. Nerdy, nerdy, nerdy. Nerdy, nerdy. nerdy, nerdy. nerdy, nerdy. Sweden. I don't know, I don't know either. <laughs> okay, so she asked you, um, she asked you this. Okay. Uh, what is the one invention that science could give you that would change your life? The invention that would improve the quality of my life is some sort of alarm or buzzer so that when I'm up at the end of a festival and I feel the temptation to Google myself, it stops me. <laughs> That's a great invention. You'd make, you'd make Just something that goes, Gordon, no, put the computer down. Go and do something worthwhile. That would, that would improve my life while the festival's on. Brilliant. So can you give us a, a quick recap of uh, where your show is, what the name I is? I certainly can. My show is called A Brief History of History, already nominated for Best International Show at New Zealand Comedy Festival. Oh, and as we know, New Zealand Comedy, Comedy Festival, far bigger than this nonsense here in Edinburgh. It's massive. There's literally dozens of people there. And it's on at 12.45, this is the complicated part, until the 12th, and then it switches to 6.15pm. Got it? Got it. Good, good, good here, skills. Here at the Gilded Balloon, and by here I mean not here, because this is the Pleasance. It's over the road at the Gilded Balloon. Nice venue. Um, uh, also, you can come and see me do my uh, midnight comedy chat show, Ellen Coy's Midnight Rumble, 5 to midnight every night. Not the 15th, though, at the Wee Coo, Bristow Square. Come, it'll be loads of fun. Uh, you also, you can find the guys at Waffle TV everywhere on the internet, on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Just use that Google thing and I'll help you. But for now, let's say goodbye. 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 Okay, so what question would you like to ask the next guest, the magical mystery guest? I'd love the next magical mystery guest to tell me what is their favourite historical era or civilization and why. Mm. <laughs> Slow fade.